So how do you know if your hair follicles are too far gone? You'll never really know how your hair follicles will be on treatment. Only time will give you this necessary perspective. Listen to this part again. You'll never know how your hair follicles will truly end up on treatment. Keep this in mind. At the absolute least, we can expect to slow down androgenetic alopecia. However, many people obtain stability and some get hair count gains as the years go by. I won't go into this too much because there are no real practical ways to know if your hair follicles have been damaged too much by DHT to properly recover. All I can say is you need to start your treatment as soon as you can. Those who start treatment as soon as possible have better outcomes with their hair. Also, it tends to be the case that the aggression of your intervention determines the likelihood of you keeping your hair. So say for instance a 19-year-old who has a Norwood 3 hair loss pattern, starting with dutasteride as it is shown to reduce scalp DHT more than finasteride is the most aggressive choice given the severity of hair loss at such a young age. This could also apply to someone who just wants a bit more assurance. So say a 32-year-old who is now a Norwood 2 deciding to use dutasteride. This isn't to say that finasteride isn't effective, but clearly dutasteride is more effective and maintains a similar side effect profile with a side effect rate that is similar if not lower than finasteride. You can see this in the paper titled, quote, Comparison of Clinical Trials with Finasteride and Dutasteride, unquote. Here, we see that when it comes to sexual side effects like impotence, decreased libido, and ejaculatory disorder, the group treated with dutasteride had a similar if not slightly lower prevalence of sexual side effects compared to the group treated with finasteride. Now, this is a meta-analysis of sorts, and the data is retrospective, however, it does establish some sort of comparison between those treated with dutasteride versus finasteride. At the very least, it's enough to say that dutasteride has the same rate of sexual side effects. However, I will say this. Due to dutasteride having a half-life of five weeks, it could take a bit, but not forever, for side effects to subside after discontinuation as the levels of dutasteride lowers in the bloodstream. In comparison, finasteride has a half-life between 6 to 8 hours. The Olson and colleagues paper, titled, quote, The Importance of Dual 5A Reductus Inhibition in the Treatment of Male Pattern Hair Loss, Results of a Randomized Placebo-Controlled Study of Dutasteride versus Finasteride, unquote, also shows this to be the case, too, in terms of side effect rate between dutasteride and finasteride. However, when going up to 2.5 milligram of dutasteride, the rate of side effects becomes more prevalent. But the takeaway here is that these drugs are safe. Also, this video isn't about side effects. So if you have problems with that, then please go figure out your issue elsewhere. The side effects are so overblown at this point with finasteride and dutasteride, I only question if people care about treating their hair loss. If this is an issue for you, voice your concerns elsewhere. Compared to other alopecia drugs like JAK inhibitors for alopecia areata. And mind you, JAK inhibitors suppress the immune system because alopecia areata involves the body's immune system attacking hair follicles. Those that fear monger and complain about finasteride and dutasteride should count themselves lucky that they have androgenetic alopecia and not alopecia areata because the treatment for androgenetic alopecia is safer and straightforward. Anyway, I digress. It's very important that you start as early as possible when you have androgenetic alopecia. This means the moment you notice it. We have two 10-year studies that show this to be true. These are, quote, long-term 10-year efficacy of finasteride in 523 Japanese men with androgenetic alopecia, unquote, by Masayuki Yanagasawa and colleagues. And the other paper is, quote, finasteride one milligram daily administration on male androgenetic alopecia in different age groups 10-year follow-up unquote by rossi and colleagues both papers display with empirical evidence that early intervention leads to better long-term results and don't worry we also have a study for dutasteride the study titled mean long-term efficacy and safety of dutasteride 0.5 milligram in korean men with androgenetic alopecia five-year data demonstrating clinical improvement with sustained efficacy, authored by Sang Min Choi, Sun Hyo Kwan Wu Young Sim, and Bark Lin Liu investigated the long-term efficacy and safety of dutasteride 
0.5 mg in Korean men with androgenetic alopecia. In this retrospective analysis involving 99 male patients who used dutastride 0.5 mg over a period of at least 5 years, 89.9% showed improvement based on the investigator global assessment score, while 93.9% experienced a halt in androgenetic alopecia progression. Using the basic and specific, also known as the BASP classification, clinical improvements were observed in 52.5% of patients classified as the basic type, 75% of those in the specific F for frontal type, and 82.2% categorized under the specific V for vertex type. Essentially, not only is dutastride shown to be effective, but in cases where the hair loss isn't too advanced, dutastride works better. There are some studies that show that permanent changes occur to DHT-sensitive hair follicles after long-term exposure. In the study, quote, androgenetic alopecia, new insights into the pathogenesis and mechanism of hair loss, unquote, Rodney Sinclair and colleagues consider the role of the erector pele muscle in androgenetic alopecia, providing important new insights into the pathogenesis of hair loss. This pattern of hair follicle miniaturization is unique to individuals with androgenetic alopecia and differs significantly from other hair loss conditions like alopecia areata. The erector pili muscle, a small band of smooth muscle attached to the hair follicle, has traditionally been considered to have a minimal role in hair growth. However, Sinclair and colleagues have demonstrated through three-dimensional reconstruction of the erector pili muscle in scalp biopsies that in androgenetic alopecia, the muscle progressively becomes infiltrated with fat. This weakening or loss of attachment to the bulge, where the stem cells are located, correlates with irreversible hair loss, as the connection of the stem cell niche to the muscle is essential for maintaining the bulge's integrity and ensuring normal shedding and regrowth cycles. In conditions such as telogen effluvium and alopecia areata, where the erector pili muscle remains attached to the follicle, hair loss is generally reversible. The muscle remains attached, giving the hair follicle time to recover and return to normal hair production. These findings underline the intrinsic role of the erector pili muscle in hair follicle biology and suggest that therapeutic strategies targeting this muscle's function could halt or even reverse the miniaturization process characteristic of androgenetic alopecia, but you can never know this without a biopsy. And if you biopsy the scalp, the targeted area gets scar tissue and hair might not grow back from the area. In some people, the hair follicle is too sensitive to DHT and the genetic propensity for androgenetic alopecia is too strong for finasteride. My thinking on this is very simple. You'll never know if you're in this group of people. For this reason, dutastride at 0.5 milligram a day would be appropriate. The Olson and colleagues study from 2006 shows us that between 0.5 mg to 2.5 mg of dutastride suppresses scalp DHT by 50% to 80%. If the idea is to be aggressive to your treatment, but also reasonable, you need to look at the data and make the conclusions for yourself on how you want to approach the situation and how practical your approach is. That's not my job for you. Talk to your doctor and do your own research.